Welcome to our lecture online. It's probably a good idea to point out specifically that there's a difference between the maximum energy you can have in an in the inductive circuit that has mutual coupling and the instantaneous energy because they're not the same. And also we need to pay special attention to see how they are lined up. If the dots are on the same side as the current entry or if the dots are on the opposite side to the current entry because it does make a difference. Notice I used a capital W here just to accentuate that this is the, to the total energy in the circuit. You have the total energy that's contained within the first inductor, the total energy contained in the second inductor, plus the energy contained because of the mutual inductance. But if you want to express it in terms of the instantaneous energy, then it becomes a function of time because it will constantly change. It will depend what the values are of I1 and I2. So you can see that this is I is a function of time and I2 is a function of time. The equation looks exactly the same, but instead of using the maximum values for I1 and I2, we use the instantaneous values, which you would have to calculate for a specific time. And we'll show you an example of that later. But also notice that if the dots on the opposite side, we have the currents entering this way on the side of the dot, on the opposite side of the dot, then the mutual inductance is such that it actually takes energy out of the total system and you get a negative instead of a positive. And of course, it would be the same for both equations for the total energy and the instantaneous energy. So always make sure you understand that, that if the entry of the current is such that it's dot on one side and on the opposite side for the other inductor, you're going to end up a negative. If they're both entering on this side or both entering on that side, then you're going to end up with a positive in the equation. And that's as simple as that. And that is how it's done.